Hello, and welcome to OpenGov TV. I have the privilege of having Dr. Maya Natarajan, who is a senior director at Neo4j, sharing insights on the graph data platform. But before I go into that and welcome Maya onto the show, let me just contextualize where we're coming from. So data is increasing at the core of any business or organization, and it is critical raw material for intelligence, for intelligence analytics and the driving force behind digital transformation. Now, we all know that every organization, public or private, is massively on the digital transformation journey. Data is exploding. And what everybody's looking for is insights from that data. So it's being seen as a foundation okay, to data management and analytics tools, empowering users' collaboration and fostering data democratiz democratization. Very, very important words. But if we fast forward that, and think about organizations and the vast amount of data they have, what layer can they bring in to give them the competitive edge, to give them insights, to give them knowledge? That's what we'll be discussing today with Maya. So Doc, if I can just go into it, it says, why should organizations move from traditional data representation and tools to knowledge graphs for complex decision-making? What are the unique benefits of knowledge graph Okay, that other graphs slash tools okay, uh, do not pose. Well, thank you very much, Mohit. I'm very glad to be here with you to talk about Neo4j knowledge graphs and how they play a very important role in organizations. So let me take that first question first, uh, you know, which is uh, knowledge, uh, why should organizations move from traditional data tools to knowledge graphs um, for complex decision making? You know, we all know that data volumes have, uh, are growing. In 2019, I want to say we had about uh, 50 zettabytes of data. In 2020, we had about 60 zettabytes of data. And last year, it was predicted that we would create about 75 zettabytes, uh, zettabytes of data. The bottom line is, as data volumes grow, companies need to find new ways to use that information to drive business value. Mm. So traditional analytics, unfortunately, are no longer suitable for complex business operations and analysis. When we talk about traditional analytics, we mean analytics based on relational uh, concepts. By that, I mean relational databases mm -hmm. that have existed for over 40 years now. Relational databases are one of the most popular query tools across businesses. We all know that. You know, their tabular structure makes them a good choice for records. And we see that they're popular for accounting and other transactional data. Uh, because here we have very straightforward data that fits easily into relational database uh, format of tables and columns. Graph databases, on the other hand, focus on relationships amongst data. And these relationships can be harnessed to find known or unknown patterns in data that are not identified or analyzed through traditional means. What relationships bring to the table here is that they add context to data. We call this dynamic context because the more data you add to a graph, mm -hmm. the more relationships uh, that are formed. And so the, the more context you have, you're getting context dynamically. Okay, so that's a graph. Now, let me take you one level higher with knowledge graphs. First of all, I'm going to give you a very simple definition of a knowledge graph. A knowledge graph is a map of everything an organization knows about a, a particular topic. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of a pharmaceutical company because that's my background. You know, a pharmaceutical company will have knowledge about how to get drugs to the market. And these drugs will be in a particular therapeutic area. It could be hypertension, it could be diabetes, it could be cancer. And so the domain knowledge that that particular pharmaceutical has in, in, um, in this area is very specific and proprietary to that pharmaceutical, right? Now, in a knowledge graph, this domain knowledge is key. It is what we call semantics. Semantics basically means meaning, and semantics adds a second layer of context to data. So knowledge graphs have deep dynamic context. You'll recall I told you graphs uh, give dynamic context. Knowledge graphs have deep dynamic context. Now, it's this deep dynamic context that makes knowledge graphs the top choice of use um, for, uh, for use cases that require complex decision making because complex decisions are typically made in context. I mean, you have to have context to make complex decisions, right? Um, now, graph technology started off originally for relationship-heavy use cases such as fraud detection and recommendations. 
But today, we know that most use cases across various industries, I'm talking about supply chain to financial services, um, to life sciences and beyond, these use cases require complex decision making. And so graph technology, and in particular, knowledge graphs, have become the top choice for most of these use cases. Okay, so I've just answered that first question. And the second question, Mohit, uh, if you could just repeat it, it's what are, what are the unique benefits of knowledge Correct. graphs? So what are the benefits okay. as opposed to the normal tools that people are currently using? Hence, why should they, I'm going to use the word, not migrate, but enhance their, their toolkit, right, to use a Neo4j solution? That's right. Okay. So that's a great question. I would say there are two main things that are unique benefits of knowledge graphs. Now, remember I said that semantics is one key component of a knowledge graph. You know, a knowledge graph, again, there are three components to a knowledge graph. We have data, we have graph, and then we have semantics. So semantics is, uh, is one of the key components. Now, in a knowledge graph, semantics or meaning is encoded alongside the data in the graph itself. And that is how knowledge graphs drive intelligence into data to significantly enhance its value. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's one unique thing about knowledge graphs. It increases the value of data through semantics by adding more context. Now, the second thing about knowledge graphs is that they have the ability to make incumbent technologies better. So what do I mean by that? I liken knowledge graphs to an ad from the 90s. Um, I'm dating myself here, but in any event, this was one of the best ads that I've ever seen. It, it's a BASF ad, and the tagline was, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. Now, knowledge graphs act in exactly the same way. They make existing technologies better by providing better data management, better prediction, and better innovation, partly because they fuel um, uh, AI and machine learning, and partly because they lend themselves really well to a number of use cases. So in effect, knowledge graphs have a lot going for them, and it's exciting times for all of that, uh, for all of us, you know, because of that. No, absolutely, and thanks for that because that makes sense. So the way the knowledge graph eases, okay, I would say the complex process is because you are giving intelligence to every stage of the data. Fair. That is absolutely correct. To summarize yes. that. All yes. right. So then let's move on a little bit. So as organizations has different business requirements, right, and challenges and context, depending on what their needs are, including this digital strategy, because let's face it, strategy is being recalibrated all the time now. Okay, it's just shifting. So how does Neo4j tailor its solution based on each customer's requirements? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Now, the way I think about it is um, in terms of knowledge graphs. You know, any organization we have is or identified by its domain knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, um, knowledge graphs explicitly take domain information into account in the form of semantics. Okay, so by utilizing knowledge graphs, Neo4j tailors the solutions for each organization according to its domain knowledge. So let me exemplify this. I'm actually going to share with you. Um, a customer story, and this is the AstraZeneca customer story. I chose AstraZeneca because, and, you know, it's been in the news the last couple of years, specifically due to the pandemic, because of their uh, COVID vaccine, right? And, you know, obviously, we're thankful that there are many pharmaceutical companies working on vaccines at this time of need. But I digress. Let me come back to this. AstraZeneca is a Neo4j customer, and they use a knowledge graph for analyzing patient journeys. A patient journey is described as a patient's experience throughout an episode of care, you know, starting with the admission of the patient into the hospital and concluding with the uh, discharge of the patient from the hospital. Now, at AstraZeneca, they rec recognize that no, no two patient journeys are exactly the same. Um, and, you know, uh, but they wanted to find places where they could improve the outcomes for patients. Now, complex diseases like diabetes and kidney disease develop over years and uh, typically involve many, many doctor visits, tests, and diagnoses. For AstraZeneca, the challenge was twofold. One was how to intervene faster during a patient's journey in order to improve outcomes. And the second was how to find similarities between two patients so as to provide better treatments. So what they did was they used a combination of a Neo4j knowledge graph and machine learning. 
And uh, they analyzed tens of billions of records of visits, tests, and diagnoses over a three-year period. Um, and using that data, what they did was they identified journey archetypes. You know, these are typical journeys and journey patterns. And using uh, Neo4j graph algorithms, they found influential touch points so that they could intervene at the earliest moment in a patient's journey to make an impact. What that has allowed them to do is to significantly improve patient care. Now, the reason I, I relayed this uh, customer story to you is, uh, you know, I wanted to really point out in this case that it's the knowledge graph that they used that allowed them to customize the solution for them because, you know, it's that domain knowledge that's important to AstraZeneca in this particular area of patient journeys. So I hope that made sense in terms of how we customize our solution via knowledge graphs specific to our customers. No, spot on, actually. And that, that contextualizes the entire thing because as you make your data smarter, you get a lot more insights from it. And that's exactly the journey that you guys are going down. So then let me bring in AI into the mix too. You got a knowledge graph, Okay, combined with AI, I'm saying, okay, now you have a platform on steroids. How does that work? Yeah, it is. It, it's really a platform on steroids for sure. Um, you know, com companies are increasingly using AI applications for decision making. But because of uh, a lack of contextual information, AI systems have not yet been able to achieve their full potential as reliable solutions for complex problems. That's where knowledge graphs come in. If they, you know, they are a logical way to capture data relationships and convey their meaning. Knowledge graphs drive intelligence into data itself and give AI the context it needs to be more explainable, accurate, and repeatable. Now, the funny thing is, uh, neither AI nor knowledge graphs is new technology. Knowledge graphs have been around for about five decades now. Um, in, in fact, exactly 50 years because the term knowledge graph was coined um, in 1972. AI has been around for slightly longer. You know, it was officially formalized somewhere around 1950s, I think 1955 or so. So they've been around for about 75, 75-ish years, right? But only lately have both of them come of age and joined forces. And um, although data and compute power have contributed to the rise um, in, you know, of both these technologies in the last decade, it's the powerful combination of the two that's spurring an explosion of interest in using the two together. Now, going back to specifically how knowledge graphs benefit AI or machine learning is that they provide context in two ways. And it's all about context. Whenever you hear, um, whenever I talk about knowledge graphs, I talk, uh, you know, it, it goes hand in hand with context. So uh, knowledge graphs provide benefits in, uh, you know, provide context in two different ways. First of all, Knowledge graphs give data context by the addition of semantics. As I mentioned, semantics is encoded alongside data in a knowledge graph, and it's what drives intelligence into the data to make it smart, right? More importantly, it confers context to data, okay? Secondly, in addition to semantics, relationships between data provide another level of context. Now, you know, uh, relationships are the best predictors of behavior. But most data science approaches leave out data relationships as a data source because relationships are very hard to process. You know, they're actually very hard to extract. And uh, so what data scientists do today is just toss relationships out. They don't even think about it. But if you ask most data scientists today, they'll tell you, oh, boy, if only I had more data, my model could be so much more predictive. With knowledge graphs, data science, scientists get more data. It's in the form of relationships. So really what they get to do is double dip on the data they already have. You know, they have the existing data and the relationship data they have, but they're not using. Because it is built on graph technology, knowledge graphs capture relationships for analysis. Okay, so now not only do data scientists have more data, but they also have more data variety because of those relationships. And we know in machine learning, the more data you have, the higher the data quality. More data variety, the higher the accuracy. And you know, so data scientists can't ask uh, for more. So you know, I, I always tell data scientists that I, I speak to, you guys should be using graph technology. You should incorporate 
machine learning with knowledge graphs, and you're going to get the most out of the machine learning models that you're running with today. Now, that makes a lot of sense, actually. When you can increase the usage of the existing data in multiple ways, it'll give you higher insights. And you're right. That whole myth about I need more data, I think, is such okay, such a cliche statement. But let me go on and ask you, Neha, if you can, give me a couple of examples in that space, you know, where Neo4j has been a catalyst in helping out organizations. Um, so this, uh, you know, real life use case applications, there are plenty of them. Um, and, you know, I, I the, the beauty of knowledge graphs is that it lends itself really well to a number of use cases across the data spectrum, from data management to oh. data analytics and machine learning. Um, you know, I think I'll, I'll give you a couple of customer stories. Please. First of all, let me share um, a story about NASA, you know, okay. how they use a Neo4j knowledge graph to solve issues um, in future missions to space. I, I chose NASA because NASA is well known anywhere, you know, um, and, um, so very interesting story. While working on a mission to send Orion, which is a space shuttle, mm -hmm. into space, they found that its uprighting system wasn't working correctly. Now, knowing that Apollo used um, a similar um, uh, uprighting system to Orion, they knew they could use the knowledge from the Apollo mission to correct this issue prior to Orion's launch. So what they did was they deployed a knowledge graph to comb through millions of documents, reports, project data, lessons learned, um, scientific research, medical analysis, geospatial data, IT logs, um, and much, much more that was stored nationwide. And, you know, it was just strewn across um, the entire organization, um, you know, across departments and programs and everything else. And, um, you know, they, they deployed a knowledge graph to comb through these documents, and they found a way to correct the uprighting system in Orion. Now, without the knowledge graph, the team would have spent years testing different designs. And, um, you know, that could have really delayed Orion's mission considerably. Instead, what they did was they saved two years of work and $1 million of taxpayers' money. And, boy, that's the best thing. You know, as, as a person who uh, pays taxes, for me, saving taxpayers' uh, money is super important. Um, you know, in, in addition to saving years of work, right, and making sure that no one got hurt in the process when they sent out these uh, um, space shuttles into into um, into space. Um, so that's one example of a, of a company using um, of an organization using uh, Neo4j knowledge graphs from space. Actually, let me bring you back to Earth with an, another example, much much closer to home. Um, and I'm here. I'm talking about Standard Charter. Uh, Standard Chartered Bank in Singapore, um, they utilize a Neo4j knowledge graph for risk management, mm. um, you know, for proactively identifying cybersecurity risks in order to protect the bank from cyber threats. Cyber threats are on the rise um, right now, especially during the pandemic. And so this is a very important use case uh, for Standard Chartered Bank. And we see a lot of our other customers doing the same thing, uh, financial services customers doing the same thing as well. Now, another impact of the pandemic is how it's affected the supply chain. Interestingly enough, at Standard Chartered, they're also using knowledge graphs to determine, um, you know, which print vendors. And here, when I when I talk about print vendors, you know, these are vendors who print banknotes or credit cards. So they they use knowledge graphs to determine which print vendors have been impacted due to the pandemic, and and you know, and use that to find alternate vendors. Okay, so these are very two different projects that utilize Neo4j knowledge graphs, but I thought there was a, it's an interesting way to share with you that um, knowledge graphs lend themselves really well to a number of use cases. No, absolutely. No, Maya, I do thank you for that because you know what? It does put a complete visual picture on how okay, a knowledge graph on the graph data platform can help uh, organizations. So uh, thank you for your time. That was highly insightful. Okay, talk to you soon. Thank you very much.